Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage, mm -hmm. and I'm white, and I want to understand it. I think the U.S. failure in Afghanistan was not the failure solely of the U.S. military, although we certainly bear responsibility for that, but a whole of government approach that simply failed. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. This to me is pretty incredible. Um, RF pauses job offers for white men to meet impossible diversity target. All right, I gave you a little appetizer. Some of the potential reasons people aren't joining the military. Let's take a deep dive into this and see if we can get our arms around it since the U.S. government can't seem to understand what the hell is going on. Reason number one, a tight labor market could help explain why no one is joining. The U.S. unemployment rate is at 3.5%, around the lowest it's been in the better part of a decade, meaning recruiters have a smaller pool of recruits to draw from right. if everyone already has better paying, easier civilian jobs readily available. Can we agree to take off the table the labor market's so hot? That's why people aren't joining. There are so many opportunities outside the military that people are choosing otherwise. I don't think that's quite it. Stand by. Reason number two, trust in the military. The 2021 Reagan National Defense Survey found there was a decline in American confidence. So a lack of trust in the military has been an ongoing thing, but fast forward to a year ago in Afghanistan, we leave 13 people hung out to dry and you go, well, maybe it's changed a little bit. I don't know what's going on here, but it seemed like a hasty withdrawal, not a well-planned out thing. You know, follow me. Understandable that Americans are experiencing a sense of pessimism. Public trust in the U.S. military has dropped from 70% in 2018 prior to the pandemic to today a lowly 56 percent let's think about why trust has gone down when you had 20 years in the desert massive leadership failures the only people you see getting burned are junior enlisted and meanwhile you see the officers falling forward up the ranks getting promoted when their leadership their tactics their planning sucks so even a dumbass 17 year old's gonna go wow, i see the leadership not doing too great, but why do I we see an enlisted guy getting burned somehow? I, you know, I think they're figuring this out. National Guard as part of the unified command, a riot declared earlier tonight during protests in downtown Portland. More than 62,000 U.S. National Guard were mobilized to help prevent rioting that happened across the country during 2020. According to the National Guard Bureau, troops in 23 states were activated by governors to try to stand. Now, a side note, who in the hell would want to join the National Guard today? You get sucked into working in hospitals because they fired people who didn't want to take this thing. You get hurricane relief, handing out food. You get deployed for ungodly amounts of time. And your job's supposed to be the Georgia National Guard. Like maybe you work in Georgia, not get deployed for 13 months, and all of a sudden you're handing out food, working in hospitals because a policy set. You, you get it? Step down and quell the level of disorder. Because while trust has declined in the military, they still remain one of the most highly regarded among American institutions, with only 6%. <laughs> That's not saying a whole lot. Most American institutions' trust is in the shitter. Congress, terrible. Now, question for you fine viewers. How much do you trust the CDC, Dr. Fauci? You know, you can see where this goes, where people go, I don't know if the government, the military in this case, looking out for my best interest if I list. Now, I know what you're thinking. Most guys are just in one hitch, but when you've watered it down, you've softened everything up, you've made it look kind of like a laughing stock. You know, Emma's got three moms. People don't want to do that. People still want an adventure. They're young adults who want a challenge, and every time you soften it down, recruiting seems to go down. You see any correlation there? Percent of people saying they have no trust in the armed forces at all. For comparison, Congress is sitting at a lowly 10% and public education system at a 21%. I'm joining the Marines in the USA. What do you think? I think you're a fool. You're a fool. Stupid. You ain't protecting nothing but profits for companies that don't care about you. They'll force you to take injections, which you don't even want. And while I think a lot of what he says <laughs> is performance and trolling, if that is truly what people think about patriotism and service in the US military today, then there must be some kind of way to fix this messaging problem. Here's a messaging problem. There's a leaked memo from the FBI saying, the biggest threat to America is veterans, patriot organizations. You go, wonder why patriotism's down. People aren't trusting our institutions. We've got a multi-tier problem. But when you shit on patriotism, you didn't build that. I was never proud of America. I'll let you figure out the president there. They don't want to serve the country, be on the beck and call of the U.S. government, not have as much control of their life. They can get a job of equal money at Starbucks because you've killed the intangible, which is the patriotism. Be some kind of advertising campaign that the military could run that wouldn't alienate half the country. As part of the Pentagon's reported $1.6 no. billion dollars in recruitment spending each year, the Army released a new advertising campaign called The Calling in 2012. 21. 
Let's put it this way, N not everyone loved it. Critics said the recruitment campaigns were quote unquote woke virtue signaling instead of an effective campaign to fill the ranks. Veterans believe that- Rhetorical question, do you think the calling helped army recruitment? They had to turn off the comments in the video because people thought it was dumb. Let's just say you are, Emma. You have two moms. Does that matter when you decide to go in the military? You want to do your own thing, maybe grow up a little bit, get some adventure in, right? That's what they used to sell. They sell adventure, growing up, the challenge. I mean, you get into this, people just go, I I'm not interested. I get force-fed woke shit all the time. Don't need it. No, thank you. These commercials focus on aspects of new recruits that make them different and individual and special oh. unique snowflakes, which specifically runs counter to the military's traditional culture of unity and selfless service. In reaction, the Army disabled comments on the video to ensure no one could express <laughs> themselves on the video about expressing yourself. Potential reason number three for low recruitment, woke oh. military culture? The Canadian government earmarked 200 million CAD to completely change their military's entire culture. Would this mean a shift of focus from winning wars? Wait a second, are they shifting the culture to be more lethal, to be more effective on the battlefield? If they were, you'd be like, I'm all in. If it takes all trans women to kick ass the most in the military, okay, I'm in. But I don't think that's what they're doing. It's a social experiment here. It's what we're finding. Ultimately, it's not helping recruiting. If it was, I'd be like, well, I guess I'm a dumbass. This is the way to go, right? The policing feelings and telling on fellow soldiers for minor <laughs> speech infractions. The Canadian Minister of Defense, Anita Anad, claims the changes will address long-standing, deeply ingrained prejudice present right. in their forces. Canadian troop strength is currently 20% understaffed, meanwhile. When you beat into someone's head prejudice, white privilege, you do that nonstop. People just get fed up. They don't want to join anymore. They're like, the military seems like I'm going to work at Twitter. I just don't know for the pay, the headaches. I don't want to do it. And then you see what happens on the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Did the leadership really like me? They don't seem to like young enlisted because they're always burning them and shitting on them. Meanwhile, virtue signaling and now having to shell out 50 grand. On February for 2nd, 2022, while Russia was preparing to invade Ukraine, the British Army was ordered by Chief of the General Staff, General Sir Mark Carlington Smith, to stop training for a day to reflect on inclusivity. So what you're saying here is, if you're a white guy, you're gonna get taken out of the process, but we'll let the women and the ethnic minorities go through. Whether the US, UK, or Canadian forces truly need to change their culture or not, the steps that are taken in order to achieve those changes are sometimes strange. The advertising in the United States was likely well intended. The steps aren't working. Clearly, recruitment is this far down. It's calling it strange. I'm going to call it stupid. It's not working. Recruitment's in the shitter. I put a community poll out. I think over 50,000 people said they don't trust the current leadership to focus on missions. It's become a social experiment. Kids can't join and just have fun with it. They've softened it up. It's not working well. It it was meant to shatter negative perceptions of the army about how it isn't accepting of certain groups of people. And to be fair, the US Army has only allowed certain orientations to openly serve for 10 years out of the past 225 years. Now, why do you think that is? Just the other day, the administration came out and says, if you're trans, you're disabled. So how can those people make it through MEPS if they're considerably mentally defective, we'll call it, or disabled? they're not gonna go in the military. That's how this normally would work. The institution has existed. So on paper, creating an ad that explains that everyone is welcome in the army doesn't sound like that bad of an idea. Whether or not the advertising succeeded in that regard is up for debate, but it did fail. Oh, wait a second. There is no debate here. How many Emmas joined the military because of the ad? How many people decided not to because the ad was stupid and they thought it was woke bullshit? I mean, come on now. We, we know the answer here. That's purpose of boosting recruiting numbers. Evidence that media has a huge impact on recruiting numbers comes straight from the Navy's 500% yeah. boosted numbers from Top Gun. Joining the military is about becoming a part of a uniform team. The problem with these commercials isn't that it's about woke theory. It's the fact that they fail to explain what the common values of the Western world I'm going to completely disagree. The wokeness is off-putting. People don't like it. Young kids that were raised in a bubble getting eighth place trophies, they want to be challenged. They don't want more woke bullshit. They want to be men, right? Or they want to be tough ladies, whatever you want to call it here. They don't need this molly coddling mothers of America, ABC mafia engaged in the military. They want to be in the military. What they do on their personal time sexually has no bearing on how to recruit them. And number four, unqualified citizens. According to the Department of Defense, approximately 70 to 75 percent of young Americans today are not even qualified to serve right off the bat. Since I'm older than most of you, let me tell you this. When I was growing up, most kids 
prospects for the military weren't taking down psych meds, Adderall, shit like that. If they were overweight, the recruiters got them squared away. If they were a moron or rock, sometimes they can get waivers. But now all the kids on psych meds and Adderall, drug addicts, face tats, you know, it creates a real problem. Maybe we'll have to soften up the standards, get a draft in. We're going to have a real problem here. Either overweight or having minor criminal infractions that come up on their background checks. Only 23% of candidates remain who don't require a waiver to join. That number is further reduced by more potential recruits being unable to pass the Army's academic exam called the infamous ASVAB. You know, it's funny how this works. We're putting more and more money into education and kids can't pass the ASVAB enough to be a supply clerk. That's that, that's a real national security threat. We got a bunch of dumbasses running around. SAT. The pool gets shrunk even further down to an above ground pool when you consider another 12% are going to college. The US forces shrink by an additional 40,000 troops. There are some who believe we'd be reaching a breaking point for low troop numbers. All right, well, troop size is going down. The recruitment is off like 50%. But why do you guys think most people aren't joining? The bigger issue is why can't they retain people? I'll tell you why sometimes they can't retain people. They made it into a woke bureaucratic nightmare and people are just like, I can get out and not have to deal with this bullshit and make more money, so why am I going to do this? I got family in the reserves. They made it a big paperwork nightmare, getting basic shit done, the ineptitude at the admin level. People are just like, I just don't need this. I can get out make more money and have to deal with this bullshit. So it's an ongoing leadership problem. If leadership can't figure it out, leadership needs to be fired, right? If that was a platoon sergeant who couldn't get it right, they'd get rid of him. So the lieutenant colonels and up need to be held accountable for shitty leadership. If you can't get it together, retain more people by encouraging them, making it a work environment that's not filled by death by PowerPoint, we're going to continue to have this problem. But let me know in the comments what you think the main reason recruitment's in the shitter. Thanks for watching.